Hey guys, me and guess here. Today we're going to actually be doing a uh, all my cardboard guns review. It's pretty cool and hope you guys enjoy. So, let's go. So, first we have um these are all mine. They were all made out of cardboard and my dad drew some of the design. I drew that one. A terrible drawer. But this one is the C96 Mauser. They used this in World War 1 and I think World War 2. I, I thought it was, the reason why it has duct tape on there is because I thought it had, um, I thought there was supposed to be a magazine that went up in there, and I made a mechanism where it would hold the magazine, but it, I, I'm too lazy to put, to have the magazine today, so, but tell me if you want me to do another one of these, and I'll tell you guys, but, um, there's the first one, now we have the M1911, uh, it was used by the Americans in World War One and World War Two. They made a another M1911 that was more comfortable. This one is the M1911 from World War II. Uh, yeah, but it, it people still use M1911s today. I think this is pretty life-size, this one that I have. And, um, yeah, it's pretty life-size. It's pretty cool. Um, my dad drew on the design. Um, the, the reason why I can tell that it's a, a M1911 from World War II is because in World War One. The thing that stopped uh, the um, this right here, because you know when you shoot the gun, it goes and it stops it right there. There was um, they had a smaller one, and that would still like pinch your finger. But but you if you were shooting someone and freaking someone's getting a, an M 1911 freaking round pushed into them or shot into them, you wouldn't freaking has you wouldn't mind the little pinch that's going on on your thing on here. So, you'd be perfectly fine. But this one's about my most favorite gun out of all my, uh, things. Out of all my, um, cardboard gun, um, things. And, uh, out of all my cardboard guns. And, uh, it's pretty cool. I like it. Uh, so, let's move on to one of the bigger ones. Or we'll move on to the melee weapons that they used in World War One and World War Two. Or, they didn't use melee weapons. But, just for craps and giggles. So we have the trench mace that I made out of cardboard and the butcher knife. Well, the butcher knife, I only did it because my dad has a butcher knife and I traced it with a Sharpie marker and I layered it. But they used they used not tr trench knives in World War I because if, if you look up No Man's Land trenches, they will have freaking... They usually, people, uh, the military, the U.S. military was armed with... um with um uh, actually uh trench um or the uh an e tool if you don't know what that is it was a dis dis or dispensable means it was pretty much a shovel but it was it's it's a shovel that can fold up and you can put it somewhere like uh but it was it, it wasn't like freaking you could fold it up that small it was pretty small enough that you could actually like whip it out and kill someone with it it means that you would in World War One they would sharpen one part of the shovel. The other one part of the shovel would be sharpened, and that was the part you'd hit the Nazis or anyone like that with it. Okay, you would. That's how you would um come with it, and they would use knives that they'd make out of their own like materials. They would they would actually even use um they had tin cans full of uh of uh beef. That they would be shipped there to the military trenches, and they would use those, which uh, th to make bombs actually, to make grenades. And the reason it was so cool to know that they actually make freaking they they actually use things in the trenches to make gu to make weapons. It was cool. But now let's move on to the to the trench mace. The trench mace was the first melee weapon I've ever made, and they would use this to bash skulls in. They would they, they this. The trench mace was pro would probably be the most brutal weapon in trench warfare, or not the brute the most brutal melee weapon because if you hit this uh, this if uh, if you hit someone with the trench mace it would cause blunt trauma and it would in the spikes usually were in a trench mace it would usually kill them or they would they would just immediately get shell shock and bleed out f or from their injuries. But all these weapons are from, like, Battlefield 1, besides the other ones I'm about to show you. the One of the big ones, uh, one of the big guns I have 
are not from Battlefield 1, but Germans and I think Brits and sometimes Americans would use trench maces to to beat down the enemy in trench warfare. It, trench warfare was one of the most brutal br most brutal times in history. It, and World War One was supposed to be the war to end all wars. It ended absolutely nothing. But it changed the world forever, though. You know? But, um... Now that we have developed technology, we don't use any of these anymore. We don't use... We have knives. Military... The military guys are still issued with knives, but they don't have trench maces anymore. You know? I'm gonna uh, do a part two to this if you guys want to see it. Like this video if you want to see it, but... Yeah. Uh, if you got look up Battlefield One, and all these weapons are gonna be on there besides one that I have or that I made. So let's move on. Okay. So now we have the um crap. I, I forgot the bar. That was that that one's the bar, and this one is called the grease gun. This one is not in Battlefield One, unfortunately. I wish it was, but Battlefield One is war, World War One based, and this is not World War One. This is World War Two. But one of the features to this is that the magazine comes out as shown. Crap! I can't. Here. Sorry, I'm holding the. I'm holding the um camera with my two knees. The magazine comes out as shown. It's pretty cool, and um, it's co it comes out as shown, and you can easily stick it back in. And also, see this right here? It slides pretty cool so this is the grease gun they would use this in world war one I. I think it would be for people that would liberate like freaking because in world war one they or world war two crap crap but this is world war two in world war two they would manufacture these and they would freaking like in military dudes would use these to liberate freaking other german camps or sites that they would have pretty much your average american was your average american soldier would probably be issued with the grease gun now the bar was used in World War One as well. It would have a human. It would actually have a stock. If you guys know what that is, it's pretty much a thing you put on your shoulder. But fortunately, this one doesn't have any functions or anything like that. But um, it's a pretty cool gun. They would use this in World War One. I. I don't know who used it, but I think it was like freaking. I think the Ottoman Empire used this. Look up the Ottoman Empire World War One. It's pr they're pretty cool dudes. Uh, they're pretty cool or not pretty cool but they were like their techniques and military training was was pretty like pretty spot on you know even though they still got their butts kicked in world war one they would use the bar the, and even the military the u.s military would use the bar freaking um the u.s military would use the bar the um freaking the brits used the bar everyone pretty much was issued the the bar which this isn't so that's all of the cardboard guns I have for you guys today. So, and I hope you guys actually enjoyed this video. If you liked it, freaking give give a thumbs up. Freaking support this channel. And, um, yeah, so uh, let me get a good picture with all of these um, guns in place. There we go. But remember, this is the C C96 Mauser grease gun, M1911, freaking uh, butcher knife that they used in World War One, trench club, and the bar. So, um, grease gun, freaking M1911, uh, C96 Mauser, butcher knife, bar right here, the big gun, and the trench mace. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, show some support and goodbye, guys. Yeah.